Thomas Alive to Die presents Howard Johnson's In 1925, Howard Deering Johnson borrowed $2,000 to buy and operate a small corner pharmacy in Wallace in a neighborhood in Quincy, Massachusetts. Johnson was surprised to find it easy to pay back the money lent to him after discovering his recently installed soda fountain had become the busiest part of his drugstore. Eager to ensure that his store would remain successful Johnson decided to devise a new ice cream recipe. Some sources say the recipe was based on his mother's homemade ice creams and desserts while others say that it was from a local German immigrant who either sold or gave Johnson the ice cream recipe. The new recipe made the ice cream more flavorful due to increased butterfat content. Eventually Johnson created 28 flavors of ice cream. He is quoted as saying I thought I had every flavor in the world. That 28 flavors of ice cream became its trademark. Throughout the summers of the late 1920s Johnson opened concession stands on beachfront property along the coast of Massachusetts. The stands sold soft drinks, hot dogs and ice cream. Each stand was successful. With his success becoming more noticeable every year Johnson convinced local bankers to lend him funds to operate a sit-down restaurant. Negotiations were made and toward the end of the decade the first Howard Johnson's restaurant opened in Quincy. It featured fried clams, baked beans, chicken pot pies, frankfurters, ice cream and soft drinks. The first Howard Johnson's restaurant received a tremendous boost in 1929 owing to an unusual set of circumstances. The mayor of nearby Boston Malcolm Nichols banned the production of Eugene O'Neill's play Strange Interlude in Boston. Rather than fight the mayor the theater guild moved the production to Quincy. The five-hour play was presented in two parts with a dinner break. The first Howard Johnson's restaurant was near the theater and hundreds of influential Bostonians flocked to the restaurant. Through word of mouth more Americans became familiar with the Howard Johnson Company. Johnson wanted to expand his company but the stock market crash of 1929 prevented this. After waiting a few years and maintaining his business Johnson persuaded an acquaintance in 1935 to open a second Howard Johnson's restaurant in Orleans, Massachusetts. The second restaurant was franchised and not company-owned. This was one of America's first franchising agreements. By the end of 1936 there were 39 more franchised restaurants creating a total of 41 Howard Johnson's restaurants. By 1939 there were 107 Howard Johnson's restaurants along American East Coast highways generating revenues of $10.5 million. In less than 14 years Johnson directed a franchise network of over 10,000 employees with 170 restaurants many serving 1.5 million people a year. Johnson's success gave him added opportunity to capitalize on getting his name around. When wealthy socialite Dorothy May Kinnicutt Parish known as Sister Parish began her decorating business in the 1930s Johnson hired her to decorate the restaurant he built in Somerville, New Jersey. She told a reporter from the New York Times I dressed the waitresses in aqua did the walls in aqua I made the placemats in aqua. I guess I must have thought it was quite chic but I haven't done a thing in aqua since. The unique icons of orange roofs cupolas and weather vanes on Howard Johnson properties help patrons identify the chain's restaurants and motels. The restaurant's trademark symbol Simon and the Pyman logo was created by artist John Alcott in the 1930s while the fiberglass signs were sculptured by Charles Pizzano. There were 200 Howard Johnson's restaurants when America entered World War II. By 1944 only 12 Howard Johnson's restaurants remained in business. The effects of war rationing had crippled the company. Johnson managed to maintain his business by serving commissary food to war workers and U.S. Army recruits. When the Pennsylvania Turnpike in the year 1940 and later the Ohio Turnpike, New Jersey Turnpike and Connecticut Turnpike were built Johnson bid for and won exclusive rights to serve drivers at service station turn-offs through the Turnpike systems. In the process of recovering from these losses in 1947 the Howard Johnson Company began construction of 200 new restaurants throughout the American Southeast and Midwest. By 1951 the sales of the Howard Johnson Company totaled $115 million. 
by 1954 there were 400 Howard Johnson's restaurants in 32 states about 10% of which were extremely profitable company-owned turnpike restaurants, the rest were franchises. This was one of the first nationwide restaurant chains. While many places sold fried clams they were whole which was not universally accepted by the American dining public. Howard Johnson popularized Soffron Brothers Clam Company's fried clam strips the foot of hard-shelled sea clams. They became popular to eat in this fashion throughout the country. In 1954 the company opened the first Howard Johnson's Motor Lodge in Savannah, Georgia. The company employed architects Rufus Nims and Carl Cook to oversee the design of the rooms and gate lodge. Nims had previously worked with the company designing restaurants. The restaurant's trademark symbol Simon and the Pieman was now joined by a lamplighter character in the firm's marketing of its motels. According to cultural historians the chain became synonymous with travel among American motorists and vacationers in part because of Johnson's ubiquitous outdoor advertising displays. In 1959 Howard Deering Johnson who had founded and managed the company since 1925 turned control over to his son then 26-year-old Howard Brennan Johnson. The elder Johnson observed his son's running of the company until his death in 1972 at the age of 75. Howard Johnson Company went public in 1961, there were 605 restaurants, 265 company-owned and 340, franchised as well as 88 franchised Howard Johnson's Motor Lodges in 32 states and the Bahamas. In 1961 Johnson hired New York chefs Pierre Franey and Jacques Pepin to oversee food development at the company's main commissary in Brockton, Massachusetts. Franey and Pepin developed recipes for the company's signature dishes that could be flashed frozen and delivered across the country guaranteeing a consistent product. While the landmark Brown v. Board of Education decision by the United States Supreme Court in 1954 struck down segregation in public schools the segregation and maintenance of whites only public facilities continued in other domains including the Howard Johnson chain. Segregation in Howard Johnson's restaurants provoked an international crisis in 1957 when a Howard Johnson eatery in Dover, Delaware refused service to Kamala Bledema the finance minister of Ghana prompting a public apology from President Dwight D. Eisenhower. The Congress of Racial Equality or CORE was instrumental in organizing protests and sit-ins at Howard Johnson locations in multiple states. The city of Durham, North Carolina became notable as a focus for action against segregated restaurants and hotels including Howard Johnson's. On August 12, 1962 attorney and civil rights activist Floyd McKissick initiated the first of multiple rallies and demonstrations against segregated establishments in Durham including the Howard Johnson's restaurant on Chapel Hill Boulevard culminating in multiple protests on 18, 20 May 1963, resulting in mass arrests as well as an eventual rapprochement with the city government. Future senator and presidential candidate Bernie Sanders while a student at the University of Chicago in 1962 helped organize picketing of a Howard Johnson's location in Cicero, Illinois during his time as a student activist for CORE. By December 7, 1962 the Howard Johnson Company issued a statement to the press opposing racial segregation in its restaurants citing its corporate policy against discrimination, where it has been possible to change the operation of our company-operated restaurants in the South to conform to our national policy of service without discrimination this has been done. The letter written in conjunction with CORE and the NAACP praised the organizations and aligned company policy with their outlook that segregation was not defensible. Howard Johnson's restaurants by the 1960s were known to be accommodating to members of the LGBTQ community particularly in metropolitan New York. On April 21, 1966 at the Howard Johnson's in the Greenwich Village neighborhood Dick Leitch, Craig Rodwell and John Timmons all members of the New York chapter of the Mattachine Society and early American gay rights group patronized the restaurant as part of a sit-in demonstration in protest of New York liquor laws that prevented serving gay customers. The men were served drinks without incident at the restaurant, they later visited Julius Bar where they were denied service eventually leading to changes in the laws. In the late 1960s gay liberation activist and self-identified drag queen Marsha P. Johnson decided on the drag queen name Marsha P. Johnson getting Johnson from the Howard Johnson's restaurant on 42nd Street. 
In the 1930s H.D. Johnson bought the Wayland Red Coach Grill and used it as the model for a new concept a more upscale steakhouse restaurant chain called Red Coach Grills. While they had some success they were not sufficiently profitable. Eventually the last 15 Red Coach Grills were sold in 1983 to a company executive who closed them. In 1969 Johnson again tried a new restaurant concept Ground Ground. It was successful. Though not a Howard Johnson's restaurant the Ground Ground chain was company owned and franchised thus increasing the Howard Johnson company profit. The 28 flavors of ice cream and piggy bank sensitive meal prices made it possible to lure families. The company also started some child-friendly promotions. One was a birthday club. Children signed up in advance and were sent birthday cards redeemable for a free meal of cake and in some locations balloons and lollipops. Family members' meals were charged at normal rates. The Springfield, New Jersey restaurant sent out 10,000 cards one year and they had a 50% return on those who came to take advantage of a birthday offer. Children's menus were an attractive staple of Howard Johnson's. In addition to offering kid-friendly food at lower prices, industrial designer John Alcott's firm created a variety of menus that kept the kids entertained. Some were maps of the United States, one was a guide to the metric system. Another menu could be converted to a mask if string was added at home. Howard Johnson's also held contests. If a person submitted proof via a check-off coupon that they had sampled all 28 flavors of ice cream the next ice cream cone was free. By 1975 the Howard Johnson Company had more than 1,000 restaurants and more than 500 motor lodges in 42 states and Canada. The company reached its peak that year but the late 1970s marked the beginning of the end for the Howard Johnson Company. Because of the oil embargo of 1974 the Howard Johnson's restaurants and motor lodges which received 85% of revenue from travelers lost profits when Americans could not afford long trips or frequent vacations. Rather than promoting the restaurants to travelers management knew it had to focus on nearby population centers. Also the company model of serving pre-made food with high quality ingredients in traditional dining rooms was costly when compared to the innovations introduced by fast food outlets like McDonald's which designed its products and restaurants to appeal to families with younger children. Around this time the chain introduced Hojo Cola and other private label sodas which disappointed some customers who preferred familiar products such as Coca-Cola or Pepsi. H.B. Johnson attempted to streamline company operations and cut costs such as serving cheaper food and having fewer employees. This strategy was unsuccessful because patrons compared this new era of Howard Johnson's restaurants and motor lodges unfavorably to the services they had previously come to know. In a further effort to make the company more successful and profitable Johnson created other concepts such as Hojo's Campgrounds and Three Penny Inns for lodging as well as Deli Baker Ice Cream Maker and Chats for restaurants. All of these concepts failed furthering the company's demise. In the late 1990s the Howard Johnson's Candy Factory and Executive Offices in Wollaston were purchased and renovated by the Eastern Nazarene College to form the Adams Executive Center. In 1979 Johnson accepted an acquisition bid of more than $630 million from Imperial Group PLC of London, England. Imperial obtained 1,040 restaurants, 75% company-owned slash 25% franchised and 520 motor lodges, 75% franchised slash 25% company-owned. In 1981 Imperial recruited G. Michael Hostage then CEO of Continental Baking Company and formerly Executive Vice President of Marriott Corporation to replace Johnson as CEO. After four years despite progress in a turnaround Imperial reversed course and sold the company. Having declined to entertain Hostage's proposal to leave a leveraged buyout Imperial employed Goldman Sachs who with Hostage's assistance sold the company to Marriott in 1986. In a contemporaneous transaction Marriott sold the Motor Lodge business and the Howard Johnson trademark to Prime Motor and a New Jersey company. Marriott was interested in the company-owned restaurants for the real estate. Marriott already owned Big Boy Restaurants and Roy Rogers Restaurants. In 1982 it acquired Host International which had operated a number of highway rest stops. Many of the established Howard Johnson sites were in prime highway locations which could be profitably converted to big boy or various fast food banners. 
as Marriott quickly demolished the company-owned restaurant store converted them to the Bob's Big Boy restaurant chain the number of Howard Johnson's restaurants remaining circa 1985 was sharply reduced. Only the franchised restaurants remained untouched. Marriott left all company-owned and franchised motor lodges untouched as the deal called for them to be sold a year later in 1986 to Prime Motors and an existing franchisee with 63 motels. Prime Motors Inns continued to preserve the lodges just as Marriott had until weak hotel and real estate markets caused it to sell off its assets and cease operations in 1990. Those involved with the company owned and franchised motor lodges banded together and formed the Howard Johnson Acquisition Corporation. They successfully obtained all the rights to operate and maintain the company owned and franchised lodges. With these rights maintained they changed their name to Howard Johnson International Incorporated which became a subsidiary of Hospitality Franchise Systems Incorporated which eventually merged with other companies to form Sendent. In 2006 Sendent split itself into Wyndham Worldwide and three other companies. Wyndham operated the Howard Johnson brand under many tiers based on price level of amenities and services offered. Under Sendent slash Wyndham the chain became a parking place for franchise conversions which were existing independent motels which had been renovated and added to the chain in order to provide them with access to a nationally recognized name and central reservation infrastructure. As these properties were not originally constructed as Howard Johnson sites they lacked a distinctive architecture and some had no restaurant at all. Howard Johnson Express Inns Howard Johnson Inns Howard Johnson Hotels and Howard Johnson Plaza Hotels range from limited service motels to full service properties with on-site concierges and business centers. Howard Johnson began offering a rise and dine continental breakfast at some economy limited service locations. The chain abolished the multiple price tiers by 2015. While the Howard Johnson Company owned and franchised motor lodges have stood the test of time since being sold by the Howard Johnson Company in 1979 the restaurants did not. Because Marriott eliminated all the company owned restaurants the owners of the franchised restaurants feared elimination and banded together in 1986 and created Franchise Associates Incorporated. In 1986 Marriott gave FAI the rights to operate and maintain Howard Johnson's restaurants. When Sendent acquired the Howard Johnson's Motor Lodges they offered to work together with FAI to ensure the expansion of the restaurant chain. As early as 1987 FAI Chairman George Carter acknowledged that we have the concept but it desperately needs to be modernized internally and externally. Howard Johnson was allowed to become tired and stale. We must get rid of that plastic image. Anything can be salvageable if a great deal of time and money and effort is put in it. And Howard Johnson needs all those same things. While the Howard Johnson's restaurant chain was preserved, FAI did not have enough money to expand to new locations or revamp the brand. With the exception of one Howard Johnson's ice cream parlor in Puerto Rico, FAI never opened a new restaurant or expanded the chain. In 1990, an existing restaurant in Canton, Massachusetts was remodeled as a prototype for a new era of Howard Johnson's restaurants, but the concept failed and after less than a decade of operation, the prototype restaurant closed in the spring of 2000. Attempts were made to revamp 25% of the menu and create new signage but these efforts proved insufficient as the long-neglected chain continued to lose ground to mass-market fast-food operations. By March 1995 it was clear the number of restaurants were in decline with FI's official directory listing just 84 restaurants remaining in the US and Canada. By 2005 there were fewer than 8 surviving restaurants. A combination of no vision, no reinvestment of capital, aging restaurants, a stale menu, lack of marketing or new ideas and competition from other chains had taken their toll. Restaurants were closing their doors. FAI ceased operations in 2005, the same year that the Springfield, Vermont location and the last New York City restaurant in the chain closed. Sendent acquired the rights to operate and maintain the remaining Howard Johnson's restaurants. In 2006 Sendent sold them to La Mancha Group LLC which had proposed an aggressive expansion of the restaurant chain that never materialized. After the Waterbury Connecticut restaurant became the Brass House restaurant in April 2007 ONLY three locations remained. Sendent split into four smaller companies in 2006, its hotel group became Wyndham Worldwide while other pieces were spun off separately to become Avis Budget Group Realogi Travelport and Affinin Group. 
A line of Howard Johnson branded frozen foods disappeared from grocery stores after Fairfield Farms Kitchens shut down its Brockton, Massachusetts plant in 2006 and America's Kitchen of Atlanta, Georgia shut down in May 2008. In spring 2012, one of the last three original Howard Johnson's restaurants closed in Lake Georgia and was listed for sale. Television personality chef and author Rachel Ray once worked at that site while living in Lake Georgia as a teenager. By 2013 only two original restaurants remained open but the Bangor Hotel and restaurant no longer had the distinctive orange roof. While the highest tier in the hotel franchise Hojo Hotel Plaza did include a restaurant there was no requirement that these replicate menus format or branding of the former Howard Johnson restaurant chain. With La Mancha Group LLC no longer active Wyndham Hotel Group now owned the rights to the Hojo's food business as well as the Howard Johnson Hotel chain. In 2013 Wyndham proposed a Howard Johnson brand reinvigoration which would bring select flavors of ice cream back to the hotels adopt a new logo phase out the multiple branding tiers give the properties of facelift and redesign as a lower mid-scale chain starting in 2015. Despite Wyndham moving ahead with eliminating hotel tiers and implementing a retro-inspired guest room renovation program all other plans including those involving food and restaurant operations were scrapped. On January 10, 2015 the Lake George Family Restaurant Diner opened inside the former Howard Johnson's Lake George Restaurant after its lease was transferred from its original owners DeSantis Enterprises to John Larock in August 2014. Choosing to take advantage of a grandfather clause John Larock reopened it as a Howard Johnson's restaurant briefly bringing the number of restaurants remaining back up to three. On March 31, 2015 the Lake Placid New York Howard Johnson's closed leaving only two locations remaining. Then in September 2016 the Bangor Restaurant, the last continuously operating restaurant from the original chain closed, the last remaining location out of the original 1000 plus. By 2016 only the Lake George Restaurant remained what was considered a controversial location. Despite the Lake George's restaurant proclaimed resilience as the last one standing its authenticity as a true Howard Johnson's restaurant was questioned due to its dissimilar menu and negative reviews. A new from the ground up operation it lacked a kitchen staff and crew formerly connected or experienced with the Howard Johnson's restaurant chain. While it retained an original building and trademark name it had no official connection with Wyndham or the defunct FAI operating entirely as an independent and reimagined entity. In January 2017 the Lake George property went up for sale and redevelopment projects were proposed for the site. On October 12, 2017 owner John Larock was arrested and convicted of sexual harassment of female employees and on October 31, 2018 began serving a six-month jail sentence. The restaurant continued to operate with Larock as owner but was open sporadically with limited days and hours. In March 2022 after a number of controversies the Lake George restaurant permanently closed the last restaurant establishment to use the Howard Johnson's name. On the road around the corner, here's the place to go. The orange roof of Howard Johnson's, join the folks who know. Good food, good fun, kids count too. 28 flavors just for you at Howard Johnson's. Next stop. It's Howard Johnson's for a famous grilled and butter Frankfurt in a toasted roll. Or a choice steak, charcoal broiled the way you like it. Sizzling on the outside, tender and juicy on the inside. Howard Johnson's is famous for fried clams. Tender, sweet, deeply crusted and golden brown. Crispy, crunchy, sweet as a nut. And ice cream from the wonderful world of 28 flavors. Made with fresh cream, fine ingredients, and ice cream soda. Cool, luscious. At the landmark for hungry Americans. Howard Johnson's. Next stop. If you have any fond memories, please indicate it at the comments below. Thanks for watching, subscribe and like.